ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गोवर्धन की ब्रजभूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र से जगन्नाथ श्री धाम की मंगाम जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की आय गौर प्रेमानंदी All glories to assemble the devotees. All glories to assemble the devotees. All glories to assemble the devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञान चिंद्रंध से ज्ञानांजन श्लाक शुरू श्री गुरु नम नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्त वेदांत स्वामी नित नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्य बाधि पाश्चातारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु मित्रानंद श्री द्वैत गुदादिवास भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टेन चैप्टर टू चैप्टर एंड टाइटल प्रेयर्स बाय द डेमी गॉड्स टेक्स्ट नाइनटीन सा देवकी सर्वजगन निवास निवास भूत नितरा नरेजे भोजेन्द्र गेहे अग्नि शिखेव रुद्ध सरस्वती ज्ञान खले यथा सती सा देवकी सर्वजगन निवास निवास भूत नितरा नरेजे भोजेन्द्र गेह अग्निशिखे वृद्ध सरस्वती ज्ञान खले यथा सती सादेव की सर्व जगन निवास निवास भूता नितरा नरे जी भोजेन्द्र गे अग्निशिखे वृद्ध सरस्वती ज्ञान खले यथा सती सादेव की सर्व जगन निवास निवास भूता नितरा नरे जे भोजेन्द्र गे अग्निशिखे वृद्ध सरस्वती ज्ञान खले यथा सदी सदेव की सर्व जगन निवास सभूता नितरा नरे जे भोजेन्द्र गेह अग्निशिखे वृद्ध सरस्वती ज्ञान खले सादेवकी, देवकी, देवकी देवी, 
सर्व जगत निवास निवास भूता दुम्ब ऑफ देवकी हैज नाउ बिकम द रेसिडेंस नितराम हाउस अग्निशिखा लाइक द फ्लेम्स ऑफ अ फायर रुद्धावर्ड सरस्वती knowledge jana khale in a person known as jana khal one who possesses knowledge but cannot distribute it yatha or just as sati so being translation and purport by his divine grace la ac bhakti vedant swamit hota hai devaki then kept within herself the supreme personality of god had the cause of all causes the foundation of the entire cosmos but because she was under arrest in the house of kamsa she was like the flames of a fire covered by the walls of a pot like a person who has knowledge but cannot distribute it to the world for the benefit of human society purport in this verse the word gyana kala is most significant knowledge is meant for distribution although there is already much scientific knowledge whenever scientists or philosophers awaken to a particular type of knowledge they try to distribute it throughout the world for otherwise the knowledge gradually dries up and no one benefits from it india has a knowledge of bhagavad gita but unfortunately for some reason or other the sublime knowledge of the science of god was not distributed throughout the world although it is meant for all of human society therefore krishna himself appeared as sri chaitanya mahaprabhu in order all indians to take up the cause of distributing the knowledge of bhagavad gita throughout the world jare dekhe tare kaha krishna upadesh amar agyaya guru hoya tara ei desh instruct everyone to follow the orders of lord sri krishna as they are given in bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam in this way become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land although india has a sublime knowledge of bhagavad gita indians have not done their proper duty of discharging it distributing it now therefore the krishna consciousness movement has been set up to distribute this knowledge as it is without distortion although previously there were attempts to distribute the knowledge of bhagavad gita these attempts involved distortion and compromise with mundane knowledge but now the krishna consciousness movement without mundane compromises is distributing bhagavad gita as it is and people are deriving the benefits of awakening the krishna consciousness and becoming devotees of lord krishna therefore the proper distribution of knowledge has begun by which not only will the whole world benefit but india's glory will be magnified in human society comes a try to arrest krishna consciousness within his house bhojan dragihi with the result comes a with all his opulences was later vanquished similarly the real knowledge of bhagavad gita was being choked by unscrupulous indian leaders with the result that india's culture and knowledge of the supreme was being lost now however because krishna consciousness is spreading the proper use of bhagavad gita is being attempted so we will discuss about lord krishna's appearance from the 10th canto and uh, in the first chapter 9th verse it is says it says kasmat mukundo bhagavan pitur gehat brajam gata kah vasam ज्ञातिर्धम 
Kritavan Satvatam Patir. So Krishna is referred to as Mukunda, which has two meanings. Mukunda means one who relieves anxiety of Devaki. And Mukunda means one who makes Mukti appear very pale. So, Mother Earth in the form of cow approaches Brahmaji. And then when she explains to Brahmaji her predicament of being overrun by demons, at that time Brahmaji approaches all along with all the demigods to Lord Vishnu. So the 19th verse describes Brahma tad upadharyatha saha devai tvaya saha jagamasatri nayanas tiram kshira payonidehe. So the interesting thing is that Brahma is a highly capable person with the intelligence in his four heads. He is the orchestrator and creator of the universe. Brahmaji has himself dealt with many obstacles, many challenges in the course of creation. So naturally when Mother Earth approaches Brahma with a problem, one of the biggest challenges for a very highly capable person is to acknowledge that he is faced with a problem beyond his capacity. So the easiest thing for Brahma would have been to grab the problem and try to solve it himself. But maturity means to know where do my limits for solving a certain problem occur. So that way Brahmaji had the humility to realize this is a problem for which I need help. I may be extremely capable. I may have created the whole universe. I may have had the direct darshan of the Lord at some point. But still, even I need help. And I need the intervention of someone who is more powerful than me. So this is actually the greatest power of Brahmaji. He knows which are the issues he needs to deal with and he knows which issues he needs to refer to the Supreme Lord. So Brahma tad upadharya atha. So the word used here is upadharya. Upadharya means it has three meanings. Brahmaji overwhelmed with compassion. Compassion on seeing the distress of Mother Earth. Upadhare means he was filled with concern that how can Mother Earth situation be relieved. And Upadhare also means Brahmaji considered his capacity. And he considered that this problem is beyond his capacity. And so not only he went alone, Sahadevai. Why did he consider all the demigods to come and accompany him? Sahadevai. Because when a certain petition needs to be presented, more the number of people, more that is taken seriously by the one to whom the petition is being offered. So he wanted all the 330 million demigods to accompany him. Tayasaha. And not only that, he took with him Lord Shiva also. Jagama sa tri nayanas. And Lord Shiva here is referred to as the one with three eyes. Why? Because with the third eye, Lord Shiva orchestrates the destruction of the universe. Three Nayanas. So the reason being that in case Lord 
Vishnu, after hearing the request of all the demigods and Brahmaji, he contemplates and considers and then responds. I don't think this is the right time for me to intervene because I am quite busy in my own pastimes. Don't call me for all these kinds of ghastly things like killing the demons and destroying and this and that. So in that case, if the Lord refuses, considering the nature of the service being presented, Brahmaji wanted to carry with him an alternative. That for the sake of destroying demons, the supreme destroyer, Lord Shiva, is right here. So all you need to do, my dear Lord, just give him one direction. Satri Nayanas. So he had taken an alternative with him. Tiram Kshira Vayo Nidhi. So the Acharyas also explain that when we come to the temple, the purpose of coming to the temple and praying with a group of devotees, because many people often tell me that I like to go to the temple when nobody is there, when the temple is completely quiet and empty. I don't like it when thousands of people are around. But the whole idea of Praying in the midst of thousands of people is that our petition is accepted by the Lord with great seriousness. So that's the idea, number one. Number two, someone may say, why do you have to you know, chant the name so loudly or offer your prayer so loudly? Why can't you pray silently? which is also like a standard argument. Somebody was, uh, you know, in a library reading for a few hours an entire big, huge, thick book on silent meditation. So he was trying to understand for four or five hours and then he got frustrated. He took that big book of silent meditation and placed it back in the shelf. When he placed this back in the shelf, the shelf moved and one more small book fell from the top and fell on this guy's head, fell on the floor. He opened that small book and the page it opened, it said, silent meditation is bogus and not for this age. He saw the cover of the book. It was the perfection of yoga by Srila Prabhupada. And he felt this makes more sense to me right now. And then he started reading that book. So naturally the question arises, why loud chanting and why vocally expressing? Because our prayer can be expressed transparently. When all of us are offering that prayer, it is very transparent that this is what we are expressing to the Lord. Please engage us in your service. So that's the meaning of Sankirtan. चौदी के ते सब लोक बोले होरी होरी प्रेम वेशे मध्ये नृत्य करे गौर हरि when lord chaitanya first inaugurated the harinam sankirtan in alarnath he invited all devotees to chant and thus began the sankirtan movement And when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes and performs Sankirtan in Puri along with the devotees from Bengal, Prataprutra Maharaj asks question to Sarabhom Bhattacharya. What is this music which I see? Because I have not seen any kind of musical performance like this. Aiche Prem, Aiche Nritya, Aiche Haridhwani, Prema Veshe Madhya Nritya Kare Gaur Hari. What is this exact Kirtan? I don't understand. And Prataprutra Maharaj had seen many powerful performances. Kaha nahi dekhi Aiche. 
कहा नहीं सुनी नेवर सीन एंड नेवर हर्ड सो सरभौम भट्टाचार्य रेस्पॉन्स एट दैट टाइम इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट एंड इट इज वॉट इज दिस कीर्तन ऑफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु भट्टाचार्य को है ए मधुर बचन चैतन्य रृष्टि ए प्रेम संकीर्तन ही सेस दिस इज लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभुज क्रिएशन एंड इट इज प्रेम संकीर्तन दैट कीर्तन दैट प्रेयर विच ऑफर्स प्रेम that offers prema in response to what in response to the prayer and request made by the community of devotees for prema because prema means service without selfish consideration so when the devotees come together and they decide that all of us have a million questions going on in our minds all the time mone ha sadu prashto hum every moment questions are going through the mind how to increase my prosperity how to decrease my adversity how to increase my pleasure how to minimize my pain that is vidura's question to maitre also the people in this world are constantly calculating how to increase pleasure and how to minimize pain but in reality we all won't see that the opposite happens so when a thousand people are coming in front of the lord and instead of praying to the lord how to increase my pleasure and how to decrease my pain all of them decide to suspend these questions and instead express whatever pleasure i may be going through or whatever pain i may be experiencing at this moment i decide to overlook that pleasure and pain and decide to offer a prayer and request to please engage me in your service so that prayer offered by thousands of devotees simultaneously expressing to the lord please engage us in your service at this moment so that means all the thousands of devotees have put aside their other priorities their differences their unique propositions the varieties of desires rising within each individual's heart has been kept aside and what has been prioritized the unity of how our request is one our ways and methods of experiencing pleasure and experiencing pain may be unique but all of us have one common quest one common request please engage us in your service so in spite of all the differences when the differences are overlooked and the unity of that prayer to be engaged in service comes forth that is known as san kirtan bhattacharya kohe ei madhur vachan chaitanya r srishti ei prem sankirtan this is prem sankirtan and therefore lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said kirtaniya sada hari koli kale dharma कृष्ण नाम संकीर्तन सहितो सुमेध आर कोलिहत जन सो वन हु ऑफर्स दिस प्रेयर प्लीज एंगेजस 
in your service to the Lord, then he is intelligent. Because there is no point trying to minimize the pain and increase the pleasure in this world. That will be futile. And therefore, Thakur Bhaktivinoda says, Tomar sevaya dukha hoye yat Saito parama sukha Seva sukha dukha parama sampada Na shaye avidya dukha in your service, my dear Lord, whatever pleasure or pain I may give, go through, that is my greatest asset. Even the pain, that becomes the cause of the greatest pleasure because ultimately it becomes a facility for me to be engaged in your service. So, when all the demigods along with Brahmaji are offering this prayer, this prayer is accepted by the Lord. And it is said, Tatra Gatva Jagannatham Deva Deva Prishakapim Purusham Purush Zuktena Upatusthe Samahitaha so Jagatam Jeevanam Nathaha Palaka is Jagannatha. One who is the life of the Jeevas, one who is the Lord of the Jeevas, Nathaha Palaka, and one who is maintaining and nourishing the Jeevas, he is Jagannatha. He is Deva Devam the Lord of all Lords. He is Brisha Kapim, which means Varshati Kaman Samyak Kamyati Kleshan Iti. Brisha Kapim means one who showers the fulfillment of desires, one who removes the Kleshas of the Jeevas. Purusham. So therefore, that Supreme Lord in the milk ocean is being distinguished from the 330 million gods who are approaching for prayer and shelter. And therefore, so it is described here that this verse reveals how Everybody in this creation, right from Brahma to Lord Shiva to the 330 million demigods, express their dependence on the Lord. We are dependent on you for fulfilling our desires, for destroying our distresses, for maintaining us, for nourishing us, and for all, we are dependent on you. So now, at this point, the Lord speaks to Brahmaji in the form of a voice. And that voice says that, please, all of you appear in this world and assist me in my pastimes. And I will also manifest in some time in Gokul. So the verse says, Puraiva Pumsa Vadhrito Dharajvaro Bhavad Bhiram Shai Yadashu Upajivanam Puraiva Pumsa Avadhrito Right from the very beginning, because of the great anxiety caused, Mother Earth was experiencing Jwara or heat. So Brahmaji comes. And then he shares this message with all the demigods. Bhavad bhir amshai yadushu upajivanam or upajivatam. So he says, Bhavad bhir amshai. So the Lord is going to manifest very soon. And the Lord's desire is all of you should appear in this world. Bhavad Bhir. 
So the Lord told Brahma ji, all of you should appear. Brahma ji goes and tells all the demigods, all of you should appear. So he misses out one person himself. So Brahma ji himself excluded from that particular instruction. And because of that, the Lord made a note of it that he is not there to see all of my childhood pastimes. I have to ensure that he comes and sees my pastimes in Vrindavan. And therefore, this was the seed of the Brahma Vimohan Leela. So Brahmaji made a mistake, but Lord noted it. And when the Lord notes a devotee's mistakes, the timing when that particular response will come from the Lord, the Lord only will decide. He does not always decide to give instantly the reaction. So, Prabhupada asked the question, what is the meaning of sincerity of a disciple? And then Prabhupada said, sincerity means when a disciple or a devotee decides to follow all the instructions, big and small. So here, a very important point is mistakes can be made by anybody. But who is the person making a mistake makes a difference. So a small mistake by a big leader will have a big effect. And so the important point is once an opportunity for service is lost, that opportunity for service never comes back. It may not come back. So whenever we get the opportunity to serve, we should take up that opportunity with gratitude. And so, this is a very important point. And as Radhanath Maharaj mentions in his lecture that a spiritual advancement of a devotee very much depends on how he deals with his peers. And it will depend on how he appreciates the success of his peers and forgives their mistakes. And so Brahmaji here is going through a situation where he has an opportunity, but he is missing that opportunity. And so when Srila Prabhupada, he was preparing for his, for fulfilling the desire of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Even as a grihastha, every day he would go out for preaching. Many times he would take Bhaktisindar Govinda Maharaj, who at that time was known as Govinda Brahmachari in Kolkata. And Govinda Brahmachari would tell that I do not know Harikatha. I am not studied philosophy. How will I give lecture? Prabhupada would say, you come with me for distributing Harikatha. You may or may not know, but you are in saffron. So people will respect you. So by seeing you, many people will come. And when they come, I will take care. So Prabhupada would take him. And he would sit on the Vyasasana and tell him to do Kirtan. When he would do Kirtan, many people would gather. After people were gathered, then Prabhupada sitting in the audience would turn towards the audience and give full lecture. Then after lecture, Prabhupada would tell the audience, go and take blessings of him. So that is how humble he was. So Prabhupada in, you know, Sita Khan Banerji Lane on the first floor, the property was rented out. Prabhupada's one floor was given to Gaudiamat Brahmacharis for learning Harinam Amrit Vyakaran. They were staying there and studying. 
you can call it the first base in iskon before iskon was from base prabhupad's first floor house so that property is also now belonging to iskon and after ulta danga junction maybe that sita kant banerji lane house will be renovated and made into a restored into a museum so dol govind shastri was saraswati thakur's disciple very scholarly person teaching harinam amrit vyakaran and prabhupad after doing his japa he still had few rounds left so sometimes his wife would object to his chanting inside the house so prabhupad would sit on the side you know in the old houses you had staircase which go from the ground floor to first floor from outside so that way you could also rent out in the first floor to someone else so prabhupada was sitting on that stairs and chanting and would dol govind the shastri comes and sits next to prabhupada and says abe babu i just gave katha on prithvi te athe jot nagaradi gram sarvatra prachar hoye ve mora gram everywhere town every town and village holy name will spread i gave the lecture but i am confused how will it ever happen who will make it happen will it ever happen and prabhupad was chanting and very confidently prabhupad got up took two steps down turned around and pointing to dol govind shastri he said if lord chaitanya mahaprabhu has made that prediction one day it has to happen so he had that firm conviction in his voice and then he took two steps down and then turned to dol govind shastri and he said some day a fool who surrendered at the lotus feet of shila saraswati thakur will make it happen and prabhupad continued stepping down and dol govind shastri at that time he started thinking i am also saraswati thakur disciple will that be me and prabhupad took two steps down turned around and pointed to dol govind shastri and said it will not be you and dol govind shastri started thinking what does abhay babu think he is going to do it how can he do it he is always thinking about business and money he can never do it so that's what many people thought but the empowerment in lord chaitanya's movement does not depend on the ashram or the status where one is economically socially but it depends on how convinced one is to have one's desires united with the desires of the guru parampara so prabhupad took the desire of shila saraswati thakur as his life and soul so that opportunity was always there and prabhupad had all the excuses he could have possibly given oh the gaudiya mat is in this array all my senior god brothers who had the maximum association of saraswati thakur they are all fighting it out in the court i am not feeling inspired i got only three times or four times association so how will i do it but prabhupad took that opportunity and therefore the opportunity to serve is a privilege and it should not be seen as a burden the satisfaction of a meal comes by the extent of hunger not by the varieties of food which is placed in front that avdut brahmana could consider 24 gurus as his gurus because he had the hunger to learn so similarly more important than what kind of gurus are present in front of me the more important question is what kind of hunger is within me to learn to follow to serve and execute this service 
with sincerity and submission. So that is the important point here. And so the pastime begins with Devaki and Vasudev being married and Devaki's brother Kamsa demonstrating his great love for Devaki. And it is said 10,000 horses 1800 chariots and 200 maid servants were given as a gift and Kamsa himself to demonstrate his great love was riding on the chariot and at that time as the Bhagavatam reveals Kamsa was serving Devaki with great attention with great love Vasudev and Devaki were sitting in that chariot. It was an amazingly well-organized and well-orchestrated wedding. The prosperity was in display everywhere. It was a happy moment and nobody would have imagined what is going to come next. And that is when unexpected calamities manifest. The demigods, they were all looking at this scene from above. And they were filled with doubt. They knew that the Lord has given them assurance that you manifest your pastimes below. You, be, you become born on the earth and I will join you very soon to kill Kamsa and the demons. The Lord had given assurance. The Lord had initiated the demigods into serving by appearing on this earth. But the Lord had still not manifested. The Lord's assurance was futuristic. So between now till the Lord's appearance, the demigods had to cross over the bridge of faith. So now it was a test of their faith. And they are looking at this scene. And that scene is revealing that Kamsa is showing so much of love and affection and serving Vasudev and Devaki who are the future father and mother of Krishna, the Supreme Lord. So the father and mother of Krishna, the greatest of the Vaishnavas are being served by Kamsa with great affection and love. So the demigods biggest worry was how will Krishna evaluate Kamsa's service? If Krishna looks at Kamsa and thinks how wonderfully Kamsa is serving my parents then Krishna may put Kamsa's activity of driving the chariot of Vasudev and Devaki in the category of Vaishnav Seva. And if Krishna puts Kamsa's being chariot driver as Vaishnav Seva, then there is no way Krishna will ever hurt Kamsa. So Kamsa will get indemnity for life. Krishna, just like he did to Indra, he just called Indra and chastised him a little bit, gave him another chance. So Krishna is very clear. Someone not a devotee, he will kill. Someone shows even being semblance of a devotee, he will give a million chances. So demigods were afraid by seeing Kamsa. So all of them conspired together and said that this must stop. From being a Vaishnav Sevak, Kamsa has to become one who attacks the Vaishnav. So therefore they orchestrated the Akashwani. And so that Akashwani at that point revealed that the eighth sun will become the cause of your destruction, O Kamsa. Re Kamsa, O rascal. 
oh fool so they are agitating him so when kamsa hears that the eighth son is going to be the cause of my death at that moment kamsa immediately forgot all of his feelings of love and affection for devaki and immediately in the next moment kamsa for self preservation with his left hand held the hair of devaki and with the right hand held his naked shining sharp sword which was powerful and looked millions of time more powerful in his muscular hand which had the power of 10000 elephants and raised that powerful looking sword right above devaki's neck and in that next one second that sword would have come down and taken away devaki's neck chopped off her head it was just one second away at that moment it is described in verse number 35 ete ukta sakhala papa bhojanam kulapam sana bhaginim hantum arubdham khadga panir kache grahit so the words used by shukadev goswami before he says khadga panir kache with sword in one hand and kacha is hair in another hand bhaginim hantum arabdam he began the act of killing his sister but to qualify this particular statement shukadev goswami uses four galis to come sir what does he say khalah pap kula pamsan one who is the lowest in his dynasty one who is pap sinful and khalah one who is mischievous rascal and bhagini mahantum who became the killer of his who was about to become the killer of his sister so the acharyas give a very important point a cruel person cannot be trusted because a cruel person is concerned only with self preservation at any cost asura means asu ramante iti asura asu means the life breath one who is determined to make sure that his own life breath will continue flowing and to allow his life breath to flow he is willing to take away anybody else's life breath that is asura asu ramante so that is what is described here so devotee has four qualities first a devotee is optimistic second he is patient third he is grave and fourth he is brave also so we have vasudev who is witnessing this scene the description of this scene is taking quite a few minutes but the actual scene everything happened in that one moment because in that one moment he had to make a decision what to do so at that point vasudev had two choices because the scene in front of him was hopeless so the beginning of this past time is the revelation of the conflict between hope and hopelessness circumstances were hopeless but vasudev's consciousness was hopeful and therefore 
spirituality is all about how to ignite the conquest of consciousness over circumstances. If such a conquest was not possible, spirituality would not exist. There would be no relevance. And the reason why millions of people, they approach spirituality and take shelter of spirituality, and millions of people feel inspired to practice some kind of spiritual process on a regular basis is because they know that the circumstances will inflict so many miseries at different times which are unpredictable. And we may not have control over those circumstances. But we can prepare ourselves in such a way that we control our consciousness to such a degree that that controlled consciousness can ride over the miseries caused by the circumstances. And ultimately, the suffering will not be experienced. So therefore, this is where Vasudev comes into the picture. And Vasudev, at that moment, he doesn't think Kamsa is a demon. Kamsa has a track record of killing millions of people. Kamsa's power is that of 10,000 elephants. Kamsa is a trained and uh, consummate Kshatriya. His profession is to kill. Kamsa at this moment is angry. And Kamsa at this moment is having the sword in his hand. And Kamsa at this moment is having Devaki's hair and head in his left hand and the sword in the right hand. And with all of these combinations of circumstances, Devaki's destruction is one moment away. So what did, what did the reality reveal? The reality revealed a grim, pessimistic picture which appeared absolutely hopeless. That is what the reality manifested. But this is reality at a material platform. Kamsa decided to dive deep into the reality of tattva, of the philosophy. And the reality of the tattva is neither Kamsa is in control, nor Devaki is in control, nor I am in control. Krishna is in control. So between this moment when Kamsa's sword is raised above Devaki's head and the sword coming down and hitting Devaki's neck, there is still one moment. So therefore, Krishna consciousness is not how many assets you do not have, but Krishna consciousness is how you can utilize even the most minimum assets you have in Krishna's service by depending on Krishna, knowing him to be the controller and enjoyer. Bhoktaram Yagitapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram. So Vasudev realized. I could either be morose thinking, I have no time to prepare. Or I can respond by thinking, at least I have been given one moment to respond. And therefore, Vasudeva decided that Krishna consciousness does not depend on the quantum of assets but on the sincerity of attitude. And so, although I may not have the assets of time in my favor, but I have the attitude which I can control and utilize. So let me try my best at this moment. What will happen? The worst is I will fail. 
and Kamsa will kill Devaki. That is the worst case scenario. But the power to try is in my hand. And that is why consciousness is so important because the inspiration and the intention to serve and the intensity to serve, the integrity to serve, the intelligence to make the right choices to serve, that arises from the purified consciousness. And that's why Srila Prabhupada established International Society for Krishna Consciousness, ISKCON, all over the world, to give the whole world this cutting-edge technology on how, in spite of the worst circumstances which may conquer over you, how you can actually conquer over that with a consciousness which is curated to be always contemplative of Krishna's control at every moment. I am not the controller, I am not the doer. So Prabhupada mentions in his purport in the sixth canto, both pride in success and moroseness in defeat are useless. Because both indicate, I am thinking, I am the controller, I am the doer. If in success I think I have done it, then I am accepting that I am the doer. And in defeat, if I become morose, then again I am thinking I am the doer. So therefore, both of these situations is not to be considered as real. Reality is Krishna is in control. And reality is in that one moment, if Krishna desires, he can make the impossible possible. But he expects karmanyevadhikaraste ma phale shukadajana. The effort is in your hand at that moment. If you go to Krishna Balram temple in uh, Vrindavan, you'll see on the left side acknowledgement for the kind contribution of you know two devotees who really struggled a lot to collect Lakshmi. So at that point when this collection was going on, so they had come to Vrindavan when Prabhupada was there for some time. And then they looked around and looked at other devotees and they started thinking, oh, I am, we are the only ones doing so much. So Prabhupada could detect that. That they are serving, but that service has led to a certain pride. That I am the real one doing the real service. Others are not doing so much. So Prabhupada wanted to correct that because he felt it is not good for their consciousness. So it was the middle of the night. Prabhupada sent his servant to wake up, you know, one of those devotees. So Prabhupada, so servant went and woke up this devotee and said, he woke up with a start. It was like one o'clock in the morning. He says, what happened? He says, Prabhupada is calling you. So you check the time, one o'clock. Prabhupada is calling. In the middle of the night, why? He said, I don't know. You come. So he went, worried. Why Prabhupada is calling in the middle of the night? As soon as Prabhupada saw him, Prabhupada was sitting and doing his translation. And Prabhupada looked at him and said, what were you doing? He says, Prabhupada, I was sleeping. Prabhupada said, why were you sleeping? He says, Prabhupada, it is the middle of the night, one o'clock. So naturally I am sleeping. Prabhupada said, it is one o'clock for me also. I am not sleeping. I am translating. Why are you sleeping? He says, Prabhupada, all day I was so busy doing so much of service. I was so tired. So at night I am sleeping. Prabhupada said, I also work hard all day. I was also tired. I am not sleeping. Why are you sleeping? So he got really bewildered. He says, Prabhupada, you are a Paramahamsa. 
I am a struggling neophyte. Prabhupada said, why are you not a Paramahamsa? So he thought something is wrong. He says, Prabhupada, what do you want me to do? Prabhupada said, go back to sleep. That's all he said. But on his way back, he started thinking, why did Prabhupada call me in the middle of the night? What was the purport behind this interaction? Sometimes some answers are best given by not giving any answer. And then he realized, okay, maybe I am thinking that, you know, I'm, what I'm doing is something special. That's what looks like has bothered Srila Prabhupada. And therefore, Vasudev's greatest asset what his, was his humility. He was humble to know that with all the weapons at my disposal, the ability to transform Kamsa's heart at this moment and arrest the movement of Kamsa's sword. Kamsa's sword cannot be stopped by my sword. Kamsa's sword can only be stopped by my word. My word, which may be empowered by Krishna. So therefore, with a prayer to the Lord, he at this point started glorifying Kamsa. And then he kind of tried to convince Kamsa about the glories of you know, the fact that he need not be in any kind of worry now. Because ultimately it is the eighth child who is going to be the cause of the destruction. So like that, you know, a whole series of conversations begin. Today's lecture is mainly to inspire preparation of the consciousness to create the suspense for the story which all of you know already. But as we prepare our consciousness for Janmashtami, we allow Krishna to manifest in our heart. And the 10th canto from the verse 37 onwards, first chapter, will take you through that fascinating dialogue between Vasudev and Kamsa and Kamsa's response and the unlimited pain which Vasudev and Devaki were willing to go through to invite Krishna in their lives, in our lives. The unlimited pain they were willing to tolerate so that the world could experience the pleasure of reciprocation with Krishna. So that's the message of Janmashtami, that unless the Vaishnavas are willing to go through and tolerate pain, inspired by compassion for others, the world has no hope to experience the pleasure of Krishna consciousness. And so at this point, I would like to invite His Holiness Kavichandra Swami Maharaj, and you'll be happy to know that as we are celebrating Janmashtami tomorrow at Govardhan Eco Village and we are expecting more than 10,000 people to come for Darshan and Aarti and hundreds of stalls have been set up and um, hundreds of cultural performances have been planned and a huge feast will be served out all through the day, Ekadashi Prasadam. Of course, those who want to fast are highly encouraged to fast. But for the visitors who come, there will be Prasadam all through the day. And since this 
lecture is being transmitted live on Hare Krishna TV. So we want others to also know about the mega festivities planned at Govardhan Eco Village in Mashtami program. And you can come and have darshan of Sri Sri Radha Vrindavan Bihari Ji, Mahaprabhu, Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan Dev, and experience the wonderful energy of the Janmashtami festival here. So we have two special guests. Since tomorrow's lectures are all going to be in Hindi, so I told Kavichandra Maharaj and Sri Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj to share their message of Janmashtami today in English, which is not only to the audience sitting here, but also to thousands who are watching on the Hare Krishna TV. So I would like to welcome His Holiness Kavichandra Swami Maharaj to come and share his message with all of us. His Holiness Kavichandra Swami Maharaj ki. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Vishnupadaya, Krishna Pristaya, Bhutale, Shimati Bhakti Vedanta, Swamini Sri Name, Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Guravani Pachamani, Nirvisesha Shunivari Pascha, Tadisakani, Panchakalpa Trubis Cha, Kripa Sindhubya Eva Cha, Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Nam. So, everybody likes Bhakti birthday so we say krishna's birthday but krishna doesn't take birth but that's what kunti said although you are unborn you take birth and that is bewildering so the more we hear about krishna the more bewildering it becomes <laughs> but i i've been telling everybody read this book krishna the supreme personality of god People want to know about Prabhupada. The history of that book is quite amazing. And I, I just saw a new edition the Indian BBT put out, which had most of the original pictures, the 48 pictures. Very beautiful. Prabhupada had 64 pictures in the first volume, one, two, one for every Leela. And he designed it, he guided the artist. He wanted everybody to know about Krishna, the form of Krishna, the personality of Krishna. Made it very clear, the supreme personality of God and Bhagavan, you know, not just one of the gods and everything like that. So um, it's hard to say anything after such an amazing class, but uh, we want Krishna to appear everywhere in every home, you know. Prabhupada managed to do that so much you know, he was obviously chosen and uh, empowered to get to America to introduce the chanting of the Holy Name and then to make the books and create a whole society. Uh, so there'd be John Mastami festivals all over the world with so many thousands and thousands of people coming. I think they get like in Juhu now 10 lakhs, right? And Noida, 4 lakhs. And London, 60,000 people come. You know, all over the world, this is something. So because of Prabhupada, otherwise, even the Hindus would hardly know about Krishna. He's just one of the gods. You know, not, not really know Krishna. But now so many people know Krishna. The supreme personality of God here. He's a person, he's the head of all the gods, <laughs> he's not just one of them. He's Deva Deva, Deva Deva Jagatpate. He's the god of the gods, you know, he's the supreme controller. So we want to share it, I think, I don't remember the exact word, but was there right in the beginning of the purport. We have to share this, it's our duty to get out or to stay down and you know, bring people here. That, however, we can do it. Like now, we have the Hare Krishna TV and can reach so many people. So many different things. 
devotees are thinking and empowered by Prabhupada to think of more and more ways to give it out. So we want to be learned and know who is Krishna and then we can give it to others when they come. Because everybody's looking for Krishna, the supreme Paramananda, supreme bliss, everybody wants happiness. In the West now we see a lot of shops called bliss. It's been a common word, but they don't know what it is. Bliss, bliss is Ananda. It's, it's only from Krishna we can get that. So be ready for all these people. Everybody be on your toes and ready to help anybody. The Disney World, uh, they have these sweepers everywhere so that if anybody drops anything, they sweep it up immediately. But they're all highly trained because everybody asks them, where is this? What about this? What about that? So these sweepers, they're standing with their little broom, but they, they know everything about the place. And they're trained to be very happy and talk to everybody very nicely. <laughs> so we want to be like that. Uh, whatever our position is in society, everyone can talk about Krishna. Just whatever you know about Krishna. Is. Like Prabhupada said, that little Saraswati, she just asked people, do you know who is Krishna? They'd say no. She'd say, Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> Three-year-old kid. So thank you all very much for, you know, serving Krishna so nicely and giving us some service. And read the Krishna book, distribute the Krishna book. Everything is there, the commentaries of all the acharyas, everything. Prabhupada just blended it all in. So it sounds like storytelling. It's not just storytelling. <laughs> and if you get this new version from the Indian BBT, you may not have seen all those original paintings. Many devotees have never seen them. But they're very incredible. They're, they're not like highly sophisticated art. But they, 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 when we first distributed that book, we just showed the pictures. I didn't know anything. You know, we just got the book. And I said, these, these, are, these are windows to the spiritual world. And people would, almost everybody, just say, how much is it? Just from looking at a few paintings. They had so much power. Because Prabhupada did it. He just used the hands of the devotees. He told them, just chant the whole time you're painting. Don't worry that you're not good artists. Don't worry that you never have no idea what Krishna looked like or demigods you've never seen. It. Just chant Hare Krishna and paint. And they did, and it, you know, it's all there. And now it's more and more advanced. They have so many wonderful artists. Okay. Shukta John Mastami Kija. Govardhaniko village Kija. And Krishna is the cowherd boy. And his planet is Goloka, so we have a lot of cows here. And it's very auspicious. Yeah, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. His Holiness Kavichandra Swami Maharaj Ki. Come. So, as Sri Krishna Chaitanya Swami is preparing, I would like to also announce that His Grace Gorang Darshan Prabhu has come up with a new book, The Art of studying and teaching scriptures. So this is available at the gift shop and on Amazon and Flipkart. And uh, this has been published by Tulsi Books. So all the details about how one needs to study Srila Prabhupada's books in what mood and memorize verses and you know how to prepare for giving lectures, all of that has been covered by His Grace Gorang Darshan Prabhu. I request him to come and Give this copy to His Holiness Kavichandra Swami Maharaj. Haribo! Om Gyana Chamandasya Dinanjana Shilakaya Chakshwa Militam Dina Tasmai Shri Guvain Maha. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Nitanamani Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharde Nevisheshara Shunyavadi Pachachadish Tarde 
हरे कृष्णा सो आई फील वेरी फॉर्चुनेट मैं बहुत भाग्यवान है टू बी एबल टू शेयर समथिंग अबाउट श्री कृष्ण जन्माष्टमी टुडे द डे बिफोर टुमोरोज जन्माष्टमी फेस्टिवल एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर इन जी ई वी गोवर्धन इको विलेज व्हिच आर ब्यूटीफुल सो मेनी gorgeous preparations are being made the flowers are just fully adorning the entire mandir this morning his holiness is kavi chandra maharaj when he arrived in the temple he saw all these flowers and he said ah the opulence of india flowers in japan one flower garland will cost 100 So this is a tremendous opulence that we have here that if we were to decorate Japan's mandir with so many flowers we could we could build a TOVP practically <laughs> it's so much so it's it's very wonderful to be here and to be amidst all this these natural opulences of Vrindavan the flowers and the fruits and and most importantly the bhakti of the devotees here is such a wonderful devotional mood the deities are dressed so with so much devotion and so many preparations are being made here in govardhan eco village for tomorrow's festival so please come and visit us here at govardhan eco village tomorrow if you get an opportunity most welcome and i'm sure you'll be very very happy Uh, if you manage to come or visit any of our is concentrates a similar mood of bhakti pure devotional service is pervading so i'd like to just share a few shlokas very relevant from bhagavad gita yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bharati bharata abhutanam adharmasya tadatmanam shujam yaham paritranaya sadunam vinashaya cha duskritam dharma samstapana thaya sambhavami yuge yuge So I remember my first Janmashtami festival in 1991. I was on Padayatra and we were walking in Europe. We walked through Holland, Belgium, France and Spain. And our first Janmashtami festival was in a a, a cornfield in France in the middle of a farmer's field. And I had just come to Krishna consciousness and I learned these verses for that celebration of the first Janmashtami. that whenever there is a decline in religion and a corresponding rise in irreligion shri krishna says i descend myself pratranaya sadunam in order to give pleasure to the devotees vinashaya cha duskritam to kill the demons and dharma samstapana taya to establish religious principles krishna says i come myself so krishna comes and he comes to give pleasure to the devotees and that's the most important reason that he comes because vinashaya cha duskritam anyone can kill demons on krishna's behalf he can send covid viruses to wipe out lots of people he can send the earthquakes you know ah, people like buildings falling down and he can send the tsunamis so wiping out demons not difficult for krishna to manage through different entities and representatives and dharma samstapana taya to establish religious principles krishna can send his great pracharaks his great acharyas like ramanuja acharya madhva acharya shila prabhupad these great personalities they can as the garanga prabhu <laughs> such a wonderful uh, lecture that he gave today it's so inspiring to always hear him and so many devotees in iskon today are empowered 
by Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada's followers to dharma samstapanataya, to establish these religious principles. And that is actually what we can offer to Krishna is our, our pran, our, our life, and our dia, and our thoughts, and our vacha, our words. We can offer uh, this, this great message of Bhagavad Gita to the world. So we should equip ourselves as much as possible to share this great message of, of Bhagavad Gita and Krishna consciousness. Because this is the great need of the hour, the great need. Right now, the world is filled with kamsas, and uh, we need more representatives of Krishna, more Arjunas, more, more, more representatives of the parampara to give this great message. And by hearing this message, the conditioned souls of this world will be attracted to this mission because the word Krishna means all attractive. So Krishna is very attractive. And if we can offer that message of Krishna consciousness to the conditioned souls, then they become, become attracted and take up this process of Krishna consciousness. Further in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, ninth verse, one of Srila Prabhupada's favorite verses, Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tattvataha that one who knows the transcendental nature of my birth and activities does not upon chaktva deham, not upon giving up this deha, giving up this body, he does not take birth again in this material world to suffer birth, death, disease, and old age. But instead, naiti mam eti sojuna comes to me. Such a personality comes to me. So Srila Prabhupada has given us this wonderful Srimad Bhagavatam. Negama kalpa taror galitam falam shukumukada mitta drava samyutam pivata bhagavatam rasamalayam mahura hora sikavu vibhavukaha this Bhagavatam is meant to be drunk. Pi bata Bhagavatam rasa malayam. It's an abode of rasa and mellows. So it's very attractive. If we get into the pages of Bhagavatam, then we'll get attracted to Krishna, we'll get attracted to the spiritual world. So I'm from New York City. I was born in New York in 1965, the same year that Srila Prabhupada came to New York. This is Kali Yuga Rajdani. This is the, the capital of, of Kali Yuga. But still, many, many persons around the world are attracted to go to America, to go to New York, because they hear the New York Mahatmya. They hear the glories. <laughs> Mora e abilas, America diovas. They want to travel to America. New York and LA and other so-called pilgrimage places and pilgrimage place for crows, actually. So in order to attract the masses around the world, we have what's called travel agents. Let's say you want to go and journey to America. So maybe you'll go to Bombay, you'll visit some travel agent, and you say, I'm interested to travel to America. What can you tell me? So the travel agent, he'll give you a highly polished travel brochure with nice shiny pictures and vivid descriptions of the excellent opportunities for enjoyment in those places like New York City. There's the, the opera house, there's the cafes in Greenwich Village. There's the shopping on Fifth Avenue. Doesn't it sound attractive? So then there are so many nice pictures of the parks and museums. And you get attracted by reading this brochure and hearing about it. Yes, I want to go. I want to go. 
travel agent will say, okay, that'll be two lakhs. Okay, take my money, take my money. So similarly, Srila Prabhupada has distributed Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world. And Srimad Bhagavatam, as His Holiness Kavi Chandra Maharaj has explained, is providing windows to the spiritual world. And by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing these pastimes and seeing the beautiful pictures painted by the devotees as directed by Srila Prabhupada, we will be attracted to the spiritual world. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is a travel brochure to bring us back to the spiritual world. So we should get attracted to Srimad Bhagavatam, read Srimad Bhagavatam, and share Srimad Bhagavatam with others. This will be very good for us, and this will be very good for the whole population. So sometimes we approach our family and friends. We want to invite them to the temple. They say, I, I'm not going to come today. I come regularly. And we say, what do you mean you come regularly? They say, I come regularly. Every John Mastami, I visit Mandir. I'm very regular. So now is the great opportunity for all of us to call our friends and family and invite them to the Janastami festival. So let us all make an endeavor to bring some new people to the festival tomorrow, our family, our friends. Thanks once again to all the devotees here at GV, GEV, Govardhan Eco Village for hosting us here. I'm very grateful to see how Srila Prabhupada's movement is spreading. Thank you very much. Sri Krishna Janmastami Ki Jai. Govardhan Eco Village Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.